If you remember, we were discussing the benefits of the Spring IOC container. Particularly, we were comparing and contrasting a static factory approach to a Spring IOC container approach. Let's walk through another example to continue that evaluation. So let's imagine that our customer has decided to allow videos to be digitally streamed from their website. In order to support this business process, we have created the Digital Media Locator class, which implements the Source Locator interface. In order to support this change, we will need to modify our customer website clients to use the Digital Media Locator. We're going to first do this using the Static Factory approach. So let's take a look at the customer website class within the factory package. And the first thing we see is that we are using a kiosk locator factory to create an instance of a kiosk locator. We are then providing that instance to the rental service constructor. In order to support streaming digital video, we need to modify this code to inject an instance of the digital media locator into the rental service constructor instead of using the kiosk locator. Now, there's one problem with this. We can't simply change the kiosk locator factory to return an instance of the digital media locator. That is because there are other clients that are depending on the kiosk locator factory to return an instance of the kiosk locator. For example, the admin console, the mobile app, and the nightly inventory job all rely upon that kiosk locator factory. So how do we solve this issue? Well, the only solution we have is to create a new factory. So I'm going to copy the kiosk locator factory, and we will create a new instance, which I'm going to call the Digital Media Locator Factory. And now we will open that class. So we will need to modify the create instance method to return an instance of the digital media locator instead of the kiosk locator. So we will change the invocation of that constructor and we will import the digital media locator class. And now we have our factory. The next step would be to return to our customer website and modify the class to use the digital media locator. Okay, so our customer website will now use the digital media locator to find the locations of different titles. Can you spot any problems with this approach? Well, for one, every new implementation we make of the source locator interface will require us to create a new factory. And when we look at that factory, we will see that it is going to explicitly invoke the constructor of the source locator implementation. And as we saw in the previous lesson, when those constructors change, we need to modify every instance where the constructor is invoked. So let's compare this approach to using the Spring IOC container. I'm going to close these classes and we will open our application context.xml file. And within this file, we need to create a new bean and we'll give it an ID of digital media locator. And now we need to specify the class of that bean and it's going to be our new implementation of the source locator, which is the digital media locator. And our bean is now created. And the next thing we'll need to create is a new rental service. And I'm gonna call this digital media rental service. And we need to specify the class. And that is of type rental service. And now we know that our rental service requires that we inject a constructor argument. So we'll provide that argument. And it's going to refer to the digital media locator bean. Okay, so we created the beans within our application context. And now we just need to pull the appropriate bean from the application context. So I'm going to copy the ID of the digital media rental service. 
And now we're going to look at the customer website for the IOC package. And all I need to do to make this work is switch the ID of the bean we are retrieving from the application context. There we go. And then to test this out, we just have some code here that loops through each one of the locations we return and prints out the name of the location. Let's quickly run through this and we'll look at our console. And you can see that we're looking through the different servers to find the digital media. So our change worked well. So when comparing these two approaches, the Spring IOC container is the clear winner. In order to change the implementation, all we needed to do was add a few lines of XML and then modify one string literal within our customer website. Had this been a web application as opposed to a standalone application, we would not have had to modify any Java code. If you contrast that with the factory implementation, you notice we had to create a factory for our new dependency, our new instance of source locator. That is an issue because that approach will not scale well. We shouldn't have to create a new factory every time we create an implementation of the source locator. Right now, I'm sure somebody's out there screaming, use the abstract factory pattern or go with the service locator. Well, these approaches present the same problem. We are writing code to glue our application together instead of building out our business code. And as the complexity of our objects increase, such as when we inject dependencies within dependencies, we're going to wind up with more of that glue code. The whole point of the Spring IOC container and dependency injection is to eliminate that type of coding so that we can get down to actually programming our business logic. If you think back about all these changes we made, when we worked with the IOC container, how much code did we actually touch? Through both examples, we only touched that one string literal. Everything else was done in our XML. Did you notice how many factories we had to work with or how many other patterns we had to use while modifying the Spring IOC container? The Spring IOC container handled the collaboration of all of our objects within our application. We did not need to apply any patterns other than dependency injection to have an application that was robust and flexible. And these are the major selling points of the Spring IOC container. When people say the container provides flexibility or reduces glue code, they're referring to the benefits that we've witnessed in these examples. So there's a lot of great things that the Spring framework can do. You can wire up some data persistence code with only a few lines, or you can build a really well-architected web application, or you can interact with your favorite social networking API. But at its core, Spring is a dependency injection framework, and all of those other projects rely upon it.